Welcome to Module 2, FortiGauge Firewall Installation. In this section, we are going to run the setup wizard. In terms of session outcome, at the end of this session, we would like to have the FortiGauge Firewall configured so that the users on the inside, on the LAN, have access to internet. And here is how uh, everything should look by the end. So first of all, up to this point we have talked about the FortiGate firewall. So let's say this is the FortiGate firewall. And we have configured our port 1, let's say internet. on port 1 and if you if you remember we have said that this is 172.27.2.155/24 good now at this point we would like to provide internet access to home users to the LAN let's say that this is our PC so test PC and this is connecting to the firewall on port 2 so this is port 2 now on this on this side of the connection we are going to set up a DHCP server so the FortiGate will provide IP addresses to the internal LAN we will have a range let's say 192.168.1.0 slash 24 and for example the 40 gate would be that one and the PC would be that 100 after successfully configuring the 40 gate firewall as a DHCP server to serve the request the DHCP request that will come from the LAN from the LAN segment we will just test everything so do not just configure a network engineer and IT professional has to go through, through three phases. First of all, yes, we have to configure. To configure the network in the way that we need. Second is to verify. And this is also very important. We have to verify that our configuration is in place, that all, all the, the configuration steps that we have gone through have been implemented. And last, if everything is not going necessarily and it's a must, we have to troubleshoot. So at the end, we'll have, as said, the FortiGate firewall already has the connection to the internet, we have tested it, and we'll just set up a DHCP server to serve the PCs that are, that are in the LAN, in the LAN segment, and we will just ping the internet. Let's say we'll go through, we'll go to the DNS, the Google DNS, like we did for the, for, for the FortiGate, so a.a.a.a. .a 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 .a. And why not, we'll just try an HTTP session. So something like www something, we'll see. So this is what we are going to configure now. Everything is set up. Now we have a brief understanding on what I'm uh, going to, to configure and what is the outcome. So let's get started. So first step, we are going to log in the admin interface. As remembered, we have admin and no password. So here's how the web interface, the GUI, the graphical user interface looks like. And as a first step, uh, we are going to, to run the, the, the run the setup. In the right top corner, we have admin, system, and setup wizard. First of all, maybe we just want to set up a password. So we have the default and admin no password, but Let's, let's set a password. So old password, it's nothing, it's null. And for a new password, we'll just say admin. So admin username and admin password. Hit next. Very important is to select the time zone. Now why is that? If something happens uh, at a moment in time, if some, uh, some issues occur in the network, you have to have correct timestamps in, uh, in the logging events so that you can correlate. You can see if 
let's say an interface went down on the on the on the fourth gate and maybe you want to correlate with some other event that that took place in the network if you don't have a proper time zone set so an ntp server network time protocol server that will serve the 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 firewall with with correct time zone and and timestamps you will not be able to correlate the events and figure out what has really happened so for this reason i'm going to to set up now the 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 time uh, as i'm based in bucharest romania i will just say gmt plus two bucharest so next this is what we have currently configured on our interfaces we have port 1, it's static, this is the IP address, it's slash 24, port 2 facing downwards, so down to the internet, to, to, to the internal network, to say so. This is our IP address and it will represent basically the default gateway for the internal LAN. So this is the, the first IP address, the packets will traverse going to the internet, 1 and 2, once you say that 1.1. One one. The rest of the ports, we don't need them uh, for, this, for this moment. We'll just uh, skip it. Now, very important, we have to set up a DHCP server, as said, so that all the internal clients are provided an IP address. And this is done uh, exactly like this. You click on the port, the port that is, uh, again, facing the, the LAN segment, enable DHCP service, and scroll. So let's, let's put a start on IP address. As in the diagram depicted uh, just a few moments ago, we said that it's going to be 192.168.1.100 and let's have a 10 IP address range, so 192.168.1.110 and now we'll just hit next. So this is just a summary of the configuration, admin password has been modified, time zone has been also set up, uh, port 1 is the same, port 2 it's uh, configured like 1.1 and we have also configured, uh, configured DHCP service on it. So we'll just hit now configure and we have just been logged out of the session. Let's see if now hitting admin and admin will provide us access. And yes, now we have logged in again the 48 VM64 KVM uh, image. And let's see how it looks. Configuration, good. Network interfaces. And we are configuring this one. DHCP clients one. So this looks fine. It means that our uh, our PC, our test computer, has requested and received IP address from from this uh, this firewall. So let's see uh, if this is true and what are the configuration that we have received. As said, I have two uh, two LANs, so two NICs, two network interface cards. This is used, the RDP management is for accessing uh, remotely the, the PC and this one, the lab interface, is the one that has requested or not, we'll see uh, in a GFI, if, uh, if it has IP connectivity. So let's hit an IP config. And yes, we have uh, the first IP address available in the range, 192.168.1.100 and the default gateway is obviously the fourth gate. Testing connectivity now. Okay, we have connectivity. Let's also test if we have connectivity to the internet. And no, we don't have any connectivity. Either IP or with DNS included. It's obviously that is not going to work. So why is this happening? We have to, to realize what we have configured up to this point and have uh, a, a correct understanding of what's happening and why do we, we don't have connectivity, connectivity yet. Let's whiteboard, uh, let's whiteboard our current situation and see what's, what's happening and why it's not, uh, it's not currently working. So yes, we have the firewall, we have the 40 gig firewall, we have the PC, 
we have connectivity between the PC and the firewall. Next, we also see that we have connectivity between the firewall and, and the internet. So we have connectivity from this point to this point, but connectivity to internet is not, is not happening. Now, please take a moment to, to wonder and question yourself, why is this not happening? How should this happen and what should be else configured on the firewall? Because this is the problem now. Actually, it's not a problem, it's natural what's happening, but we have to figure out on a step-by-step -step basis to understand more on what's happening and what should be done in a proper way, in a natural way, so that things happen from the first, the first place. So the packet is, is uh, traversing the firewall to, to get to the internet. It starts with a source IP of 192.168.1.100 and destination a.a.8.8 okay from the pc point of view it has connectivity to say so to a.a.8.8 why because the firewall is the default gateway so it will send all its packets to the firewall uh, in the idea that the firewall will just know what to do with it but on the other side the dns server uh, of google that we're pinging doesn't have any clue on what, uh, on where to send, on where to send the traffic, and this is the reason it's not happening. The firewall should NAT the IP address from the internal 192 to the external 170, 172.27.2.155, and this is not ha this has not been configured on the firewall. So our next natural step is to configure the firewall, the FortiGate firewall so that it will provide net services, network address translation for the whole LAN, for the whole 192.168.1.0 slash 24 to do the net uh, of, this, of this subnet to its external IP address that already, ha already has connectivity. We have seen this happen. We will log in again with admin and admin this time. And the menu that we have to go, uh, it's policy and objects. We have to create an IPv4 policy. Currently we have one, so implicit 1-1. It's an implicit deny for all sources to all destinations, always for all services, it's a deny. But now, and, and we see that log, logging is disabled. Now we have to add a new one. So create new, let's call it NAT, all capitals, NAT internal LAN. So where is this traffic coming from? So with incoming interface, it's port 2. We see the IP address 192.168.1.1. The outgoing interface will be port 1. It's the WAN interface, the wide area network interface. For what sources are we going to provide this NAT translation? We will select all for traffic going to what destination? So, so this will be also all. So any traffic from any source to any destination. Are we going to allow this happen any, in any moment, every time, like always? Are we going to define a schedule? At this moment, we will just hit always. And the action for this traffic coming from this port, going to this port, from any source to any destination, always it's accept. Now, referring to, to this menu, to this line of configuration, IP pool configuration, we can NAT the, the packets, NAT the source IP to the outgoing interface IP address of the, of the FortiGate, and this will be port 1, or we can conf configure a dynamic pool and, uh, and choose a different, a different value, a different IP address. For this step, it's not necessary. We'll use, uh, let's say, the easier, the easier configuration, the outgoing interface we already have available. It's, it's port one. And at this, at this moment, we can write uh, a command here, just that we, we can document our configuration step by step. So, I don't know, a month, a month later, we can see that at this moment in time, this configuration has been done. So, uh, let's say, Configure NAT service for LAN segment. 
enable this policy, it is very important, and we hit OK. We forgot to select service. So anyway, the service will be all. We want to do this for any, any traffic that will be accessed by, by internal LAN. And now hit OK. So, we have from port 2 to port 1. This is the NAT internal LAN policy. All source or destination always for any traffic. The action is to accept and it's enabled. At this point, we will have to go to, to the PC again and test connectivity from an ICMP perspective and also from an application perspective. And this will be HTTP traffic to, to any site. So we are on the PC now. Let's say ping .a 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 .a. Now it's OK, it's functional. And let's say ping udemy.com. Yes, it's functional. Let's hit browser and udemy.com yes now we see that we have full connectivity from the pc perspective as well 